I'm Bob Harris of Decorative Concrete Institute. Welcome to Duraman's training and educational series for industrial and decorative flooring systems. Is the Lemire Designer Epoxy System. We always want to start and obtain the uh, proper concrete surface profile, CSP, that stands for concrete surface profile. We're looking to obtain a concrete surface profile of between three and four, and generally you can do that with a planetary grinder with diamonds on it, like an 80 grit diamond, for example, or you can use a shot blast machine. Once you've uh, obtained the proper surface profile, you want to make sure that there's, the surface is free of any dust particulate. You definitely want to make sure it's uh, clean. Also, if there are any cracks that are now exposed, you would want to router them out and fill it with the appropriate uh, crack filling material and make sure that's ground back flush. You don't want to clean the surface with water and think that you're going to go right onto it with epoxy. So you would want to um, go ahead and vacuum the surface and then take a microfiber pad and a solvent and solvent wipe it. Um, water could create a debonding situation when using uh, epoxies. So we're going to be demonstrating the Padur EO2, which is the uh, pigmented primer prior to putting the Lemire um, pigmented version of the metallics down. So there's a couple of reasons why we prime with EO2. Number one, it tends to penetrate really deep. And as a result of that penetrating down into the porosity of the concrete, you're less likely to get out gassing bubbles. Very frustrating when you put a designer uh, floor down, come back the following day, and you see a lot of what we refer to as outgassing bubbles. So the step that you can take to prevent that is priming with this system. Now, what is really important is we need to cancel out the gray substrate. It almost looks white. It just happens to be the color of cement that we have here in Georgia. So you definitely want to cancel that out. And we have found that by using a pigmented black, um, it really is a nice base coat for virtually all of the metallics, with the exception of possibly one of the light, like a pearl, a pearl essence, like a white, for example. You may want to go ahead and prime with a, a color that's a little bit closer to that if you're going to just have a solid white um, Lumiere floor. So oftentimes, too, we'll go ahead and take the, the pigment powder, the same pigment, mix it into a clear as a primer if it's light. But virtually all of the other colors work great with the, with, the, um, with the black that you see here. So this system, we, it says two parts A to one part B. So the part A is always the larger volume, and the part B is the smaller. So Double check your mix ratios, um, because a lot of the systems that we're demonstrating have different ratios, one to one, two to one. We've actually put some down that are four to one. So it's very, very critical that you, in fact, mix the proper proportions. So we've already weighed out our part A, which is the, uh, the base side and basically has the pigment that you see here. So we're going to make sure that we mix into it. Now, a couple of important um, considerations. I'm very thorough and careful when I'm dumping the components into this bucket. I don't want any of the residual to get on the side of the bucket here. What happens is if I allow the A side to get on the side of this mixing bucket and then I go to mixing with the B and I don't pay close attention to that and there's, uh, there's A material on the side of the bucket, the first thing that will dump onto the floor is unmixed material. So you must be very, very careful and not get any on the side of the bucket here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our B side of the EO2, and I'm going to go ahead and mix it right in. With this material, you want roughly three minutes of mix time. Small batches, it would be acceptable to mix with a stir stick. On a uh, little bit larger batches, we're going to we're gonna go ahead and use a, a variable, variable speed drill. Right here. I don't want to do, uh, mix at full speed. That's going to entrap air or entrain air into the mix. So low to mid speed is about what you're looking for for three, to min three minutes. Once you have the material mixed on a larger application, if you're mixing larger volumes, you can uh, simply dump it onto the surface, use a notch squeegee, and squeegee it down, and then a quick back roll. And that's the extent uh, of putting down the EO2. On a smaller batch like we're making here, we're going to simply uh, dump a ribbon on the surface, and we're going to go ahead and just uh, roll it into the surface. This material will dry for 
a minimum of eight hours, and then you'll come back. And um, if you're within the window of, say, 24 hours, and you don't have any issues relative to outgassing, you can go right over it with your, with your uh, Lumiere designer epoxy, your metallic coat. If you have outgassing bubbles, you might have to sand them and then solvent wipe off the dust. If there, uh, if there is not a lot of bubbles, maybe you have to fill a couple bubbles. Um, check with Duraman on what they recommend in terms of filling the bubbles. Uh, but you'll definitely want to pre-fill them. If not, they'll come back through and mirror through into your final um, color coat. Rolling down our primer coat of pigmented EO2. Now again, this is a small panel for demonstration purposes. If you're mixing larger volumes or larger batches, you can dump it out on the floor, use the notch squeegee that we've uh, demonstrated in previous videos, and then as soon as you notch squeegee it down, go ahead and just run a back roll over it with a 3 8 inch nap roller. It is crucial to go ahead and back roll. Number one, it helps level the system, but it also almost forces it, breaks the surface tension, and uh, uh, forces it into the pores of the concrete. So we're gonna finish off with uh, putting our last coat of primer down here and uh, we'll allow this to dry until tomorrow morning and we'll come back with our designer portion and our color coats, top coats of the Lumiere designer's epoxy system. There's a variety of ways to install the Lumiere designer uh, epoxy. Um, we've, our base coat is dry. We put that down yesterday. It's black. And now we're working with four different colors. We'll get back to you with the uh, colors that we're using in a moment. And um, this, this material mixes at a two to one ratio. Make sure you read the technical documents uh, before mixing so you're getting all the proportions correct. We've uh, mixed in the metallic colors. There's a variety of ways you can work with this. You can use, just pour different colors and use a notch squeegee. Here I'm just going to use a magic trowel and blend the colors in. First thing I'm going to do is just put a tight coat down. Very random. Get some over here. All right, now I'll take, uh, put that stir stick in this one if you would. Put that blue one in there. There you go. Thank you, sir. Again, understand there's plenty of different techniques that you can use. This is just a quick, easy way. And I want to get it down quick because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to uh, put a couple vein colors in here. These two colors really look nice combined together. It's important to get it out of the bucket onto the floor quickly because it'll generate heat inside of a massive bucket and it'll start to set.
Okay. So far, I like what I'm seeing here. I like the direction that we've gone. Is that anybody getting warm yet? In the buckets? No. Okay. If there's anything I want to change, I got my base down. There. Blend this a little bit. I like it. Okay, thank you, sir. Just wipe that and just put it over there. Whoops. Okay, just hold that for a second. It'll level back, and just kind of blending them together. It will ultimately level back. But they don't bleed together. Okay. They, they will bleed together. It depends on how much, like, you know, how much. The, about the separation you have here. Yeah, exactly. No problem. Uh, we're going to prep for our next application, which is going to be um, 
the top coat, which we'll get into in a minute. Now, if you're within a window of 24 hours from the time that you put the Lumiere down, is it mandatory and necessary to screen the surface? No, it's not. You could go right over the surface because you're going to have a, a good chemical bond. However, um, it's difficult to not get particulates settling out from the air. We're working in a warehouse and we do have some, some dust particulate. Um, I've seen if the surface is not super, super clean prior to putting the Lumiere down, that's also going to give you some little pinholing. So what we're going to do is just knock everything flush um, and then we'll take solvent and wipe the surface in preparation for our final and top coat or clear coat. So I've got a 100 grit screen. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, I just want to go over really quickly just to knock any burrs off. Uh, we scuff sanded it with a 100 grit screen, we solvent wiped it, and now we're mixing up P72, which is a polyaspartic sealer. Um, it is a one-to-one -one ratio. Coverage rate is between 250 to 300 square feet uh, per coat per gallon. You do need to work quickly with this material. Uh, if you're doing a large job, I'll have about four or five rollers lined up ready to go and roughly uh, 10 minutes into the ceiling, I'll gra grab a brand new roller because if you're making multiple batches, the first batch starts to set up on your roller cover if you're into a large job. So have three or four rollers ready to go in the event you can actually hear the material starting to suction, meaning it's starting to set up and it's usually a result of um, the first batch setting up on your roller cover. All right, Joe's gonna mix one to one ratio. So the key is uh, on this, go ahead and roll it down pretty quick and get off of it, all right? You don't wanna keep going back into it. So once I get it down, I'll go about half of this panel, I'll back roll it, stay off of it from there. That's all right, we'll get it. So like right now, the lighting is really bad. Don't be afraid to swallow your pride. I always want multiple eyes looking at the surface when I'm rolling, because I don't want to miss. You're right. So another general rolling tip, you'll watch professional guys that are out rolling that have rolled for a long time. Um, this is about the perfect width. What they'll do is they'll load their roller up, they'll go right in the middle, one time up, one time back. That's about how much, you know what I mean, you need on your roller. Yeah. Right here in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you don't put it on, when I say pretty thick, yes, but um, it, it won't lay down real nice. It'll orange peel, which most polyurethanes have a slight orange peel anyways. So are you worried about roller marks or not? I am because I'm going to have not back rolled it yet. You can. I just want to get a nice long line here. Oh, okay. So if you have the long room and you're tying in at the ends, is it, is it, is it harder than epoxy or it, it doesn't self level as much? Um, it's definitely not considered a self leveling by any means. So end to end, you got to really work it. You should, yes. Now your basket weaving, of course, you can't do that in a room. I mean, how do you 